What is up, everybody? Welcome into this Tuesday episode of Flippin' Bats. Got a great one today. One up, one down coming at you. Alex and I are each going to have one team or one player on the up and one on the down. We got name that team as well. Some Twitter questions and honesty hour. We got to be honest about the Tampa Bay Rays. Let's get to it. He swings and it's a high fly ball, deep center field, it is gone, home run, and a huge bat flip to celebrate. All right, Ben, start the show already. What is up, my friends? Welcome into this Tuesday episode. This is part one. There will be a bonus edition of This Week in Otani News coming out in a little while as well, but it's Tuesday, which means if you just look at Alex's shirt, it's a big, big Woo! day. Lake show, baby! Lakers, Nuggets, Western, Western Conference, Conference Final Finals. Game 1 tonight. And I want this to be a little bit of hope, maybe, for... I'm going to tie this into baseball fans, okay? Say your team isn't having a great start to the season, okay? The Lakers had a 0.3% after starting the season 2-10 to make it to the playoffs and they are in the Western Conference Final. So you know what? Everything's going to be okay. They were a play-in team. We've seen, get this, 14 teams who were wild card teams reach the World Series. Seven have won the World Series. So baseball fans, let the Lakers be a little bit of hope for you today on this Tuesday. They had a 0.3% chance of, yep. of making the playoffs at one point or of winning? Yeah. No, they had a 0.3 <laughs> chance to make the playoffs after starting 2 and 10. You, well, you're a big Lakers fan, I obviously. Am. You're rocking the shirt. Um, one, I don't are you going to be able to go to any games? Is that like a thing that might happen? I don't know. Maybe. I I've, I've, I've never been. I'm a big like I like being on my couch. I like to see You've everything. You've never been to what? To a playoff game. Okay, but you've I, been I've, to I've never Oh, yeah, duh, I've never okay. been to a playoff Lakers okay. game. Um, and then the other question would be, do you think they win? Do you yeah. think they can beat the Oh, Knights? yeah, they're going all the way. They're going. They're going all, all the, the way. way. That is the most going fan all response. the way. Yeah, Lake my show, team's baby. going all the way. All right, let's get to some one up, one down. Oof. Why don't we? Yeah. Um, where we each give one thing on the up and one thing on the down. Uh, my one up this week, yeah. Alex, is the Baltimore Orioles. Oh yeah. I am loving this team and what they are doing. They are twenty six and fourteen entering the new week. They beat the Rays, the consensus best team in the game of baseball, hands down best team in baseball, beat the Rays in two out of three at home, lost two of three to the Braves, who are at the time the second best team in baseball. So they lost two of three on the road to the Braves, but won the first game. The second two were so close, one run ball games, uh, won two out of three against a surprisingly good Pirates team this year. So I've been very impressed all year long with this team. Uh, second best record in the AL East behind those Rays. Second best record in the game of baseball behind the Tampa Bay Rays. You got Yanir Cano and Felix Batista, who are, I, I would say, the most underrated back end of a bullpen in the game of baseball. And to top it all off, you got the birdbath out there in oh, the stadium yeah. at uh I just I love everything going on with the Baltimore Orioles the play on the field the play in the stands the environment ah I just I love every single bit of it Camden Yards is rocking these days and uh the Orioles are, are a blast to watch so they are my one up mm, I like it okay you ready Alex, for my one up? I am I'm ready for your one up staying a little in theme here okay because my teams here in L.A. are doing absolutely fabulous right now. My up are the L.A. Dodgers. Officially the best record in the National League as of Sunday after the Braves went on, you know, a little bit of a losing streak. But the Dodgers have been so red hot. Okay, last 15 games, 13-2. and two. They have five straight wins on the week on Sunday. Uh, they won nine in a row at home. Guys are just going off right now. Mookie Betts has finally just like found his stride. Freddie Freeman going off. Will Smith. I mean, every yeah. single 
person on that roster right now is contributing. They just had a huge sweep of their division rival Padres. Back-to-back weekends they took the series yeah. against the Padres. They are just looking great. And, you know, Dodgers always find a way. We, we were down on them. Coming into the start of the season, what did they do during the offseason? And now they have the best record in the National League. Let's yeah. go L.A. That's my up. <laughs> I'm big. All it's up. a big L.A. day today. All LA it's a today. big L.A. day today, okay? <laughs> it's my hometown. Let me be proud. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I also will never forget that you said last week you're also Stop. kind of a Padres fan. No. Fans, so I said when I was in, when it. I went to college at San Diego State, <laughs> I went to Padre games. I went to a lot of Padre games. So yeah. it was like, I enjoy it. Yeah. They're, if the Padres had swept, you would have come in in a Padres shirt. Today. No. I don't own a Padres shirt. <laughs> um, all right. On to the one down. My one down is the New York Mets. Mm. The Mets are just a big old struggle bus right now. And yeah, they, they cannot are. score any runs. It's a massive problem for this team they're just the second team in history to win a hundred or more games and then the very next year within the team's first 40 games get shut out seven or more times Ooh. only the second team in history to do that they have the most shutouts on the offensive side in the entire league they lead all of baseball i just it's it's so frustrating to watch them right now because they've spent all of this money on a good team and for whatever reasons yes you've had some injuries mixed in there scherzer out for a bit of a stretch and then justin out until just recently so they're starting to get healthier but this problem comes on the offensive side and steve cohen himself knew it that's why he signed carlos correa and said he was the missing piece offensively well then whatever happened with what what happened with carlos happened the deal didn't happen and next thing you know it's clear they are missing an offensive piece. And yes, there are pieces in that lineup that they are counting on that need to be good. Francisco Lindor being one of them who just haven't been great yet. But this lineup is to a point where if your stars aren't firing on all cylinders, the team isn't going to be very good. And right now the New York Mets are just not very good. So it's been a frustrating stretch for them. Uh, you build up your record. Over the course of a 162 game season, you build up your record by beating up on bad baseball teams, right? And they just haven't been doing that. The Mets are wasting so many opportunities to beat up on these bad teams and improve their record. That can be the difference between a 100 win season and a 90 win season. And over the last couple of weeks, we've seen them lose a series to the Reds lose a series to the Rockies at home, get swept by the Tigers on the road. They lost to the Nationals a couple of weeks ago and then split with the Nationals on the road. It's just been a hot mess for this Mets team that is far too talented. They won over 100 games last year, and they certainly didn't get any less talented. So still early, but how, how long can you continue saying that? I understand it is still early, but at a certain point, it stops being early, and you look up and you're 10 games behind the, the Braves, who are playing great. So you can't let that happen. You got to start figuring it out, and the Mets are on a big old struggle bus right now. But hopefully, with Justin coming back into the rotation and being good in his first start and very good in his second start, Max looking very good on Sunday and his start there, um, they're getting a bit healthier but offensively is my concern. So hopefully they can turn it around soon, but they are my one down this week. Alex, I'm interested in yours. Yeah, we were just talking about them a moment ago. Ah, yes. Yeah, my one down this week is the San Diego Padres. They lost all three series this last week, wrapping it up, getting swept by the Dodgers, losing five straight games as of Sunday, including – back-to-back -back weekend series against the Dodgers, as I mentioned in my one-up with the Dodgers. And when it's against your division rival, it hurts you even more because they're going up and you're going down, and now the Padres are seven games out of first place mm. behind the Dodgers. Now, they were supposed to be, I think, I think the biggest disappointment here is they were supposed to be one of the most exciting lineups coming into this season, right? They have a all-star lineup. I mean, we're yeah. finally seeing Juan Soto kind of turn things around yeah. this past week, but their offensive numbers right now are bottom of the league. <laughs> their runs per game, they're at 24th. Batting average is 26th in the league, and Jeez. OPS is 18th in the league. So these are not 
acceptable numbers, when you have the names, when you have the payroll, when you have a lineup of all-star players like the Padres do. So there am I down this week. They need to figure it out and turn things around quickly. You know, hearing your down kind of reminds me of something with my down and your down included Mm -hmm. big money spenders, right? Spending all the money and you started hearing things in the off season like, oh, well, team, you, they're buying buying rings. One thing is clear in baseball. Yeah. You can't do that. No. It's 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 one sport. It might be the most obvious sport where you can't buy a championship. And no. I hate to keep picking on and pointing out the Angels. Yeah, you're two of the best players in the league. You have two of the best play, the two best players in baseball, and you haven't won anything. And you haven't even been to the playoffs more than once in a decade, and that was just in one series. Three games you, swept. Yeah. Bye. So, you, you, and and this year, a prime example, the New York Mets and the San Diego Padres. Will they be in the playoffs when all is said and done? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I, I, they could obviously turn they it around. Be. And I do believe they will be able to. But we're, we're seeing this now. You can't spend the money, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're competing and and in line to win a championship so both yeah. of our teams spend a lot of money and they're not rather mediocre <laughs> doing great <laughs> but i like how honest we're being about this okay ah, so let's i see what you did there i Alex. did let's stay in the honesty <laughs> tree here because it's time for honesty hour and we're going to talk about another team who did not spend a ton of money and just so happens to be the best team in baseball right now ben representing the potential tying run he swings and it's one back into center. Bader's going to go to the track. That baby is gone. Benson Court. A three run shot. And a line drive base hit over LeMayu's head. Here comes Lau. Throw to the plate. Rays win. Rays win it in 10. The Tampa Bay Rays. Let's talk about them. The Tampa Bay Rays have been the clear-cut number one team in baseball since the first game of the season. But how? It almost doesn't even make sense that the Rays continue to be this good. But if you know the Rays, it, it does make sense. It has almost become a joke at this point, right? Don't make a trade with the Tampa Bay Rays because you're going to lose that trade. Or don't even, don't let go of a player because if the Rays pick him up, you know that player is going to become one of the best in baseball. But there's so much truth to this. And let's dive into the trades a little bit. First, let's look back to 2011 when they traded Matt Garza at the height of his value for a pitcher named Chris Archer. Well, Archer would go on to be the ace of the staff and one of the best pitchers in baseball for quite a few years. Then in 2018, they flipped Chris Archer back around to the Pirates, again, at the height of his value. And the second he left Tampa Bay, he has not been very good. Their return in that trade for Chris Archer, Austin Meadows, Tyler Glasnow, Shane Boz. I could go on and on and on here. Austin Meadows ends up being an all-star for them in 2019. Leads the leads the Rays with 106 RBIs in 2021. And then they trade him to the Tigers, again, at the height of his value. We know who Tyler Glass now has become. He's become one of the best pitchers in the game of baseball. So the question becomes, how? What do they do differently that nobody else in the league is doing? How are they doing this with everybody that they bring in. Well, we've gotten to hear it firsthand on Flippin' Bats from the ace that I just mentioned, Tyler Glass now, from Ryan Yarbrough, who was previously a starting pitcher for the Rays, from another friend of the pod, Brett Phillips, and all of them in consensus say the Rays just put you in the best position to succeed with what you are good at. You can come into the organization and they will say, This is what you do poorly, but you're doing it a lot. This is what you do really well, and you're not doing it enough. Let's do this more. So next thing you know, this team is using analytics to put the players in the best possible position for them all to succeed. And this season, they just continue to do it. By far the best team in baseball, the only team in baseball with 30 or more wins, and they're doing it all with a payroll that is 28th out of 30 teams in the game of baseball. 
75 million dollars the rays have spent in their payroll this season just for a quick comparison the new york mets 346 million dollars the rays are at 75 million think about that for a second it is wild and then on top of that think about how they're doing it pitching wise jeffrey springs this year off to a great start in the season, had a 0.56 ERA in his limited time. Next thing you know, his season comes to an end. He needs Tommy John surgery. Drew Rasmussen, 2.62 ERA this season in his limited time before getting put on the 60-day IL, and that certainly does not look good for him this season. Shane Boz, Tommy John, in September, out for this year. Tyler Glass now yet to pitch this year. Name another team in baseball that could lose four top-end elite throwing starters and still be the best team in baseball. Imagine the New York Yankees losing Garrett Cole and Nestor Cortez and Luis Severino, all of them, and still being competitive. It just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen for any team in the game of baseball. Yet for the Rays, it continues to happen. Zach Eflin was handed the biggest contract in Tampa Bay Rays history for a free agent this offseason, which is wild because it was three years and $40 million. After he went three and five with the Phillies last year with an ERA over four. This year, he's four and one for the Rays, an ERA in the mid threes. He's throwing really well for them, and he's been a big starter for them. It's just crazy the output they are getting from literally anybody they're putting into a posi position to succeed, which is what they're all doing. Offensive production from literally everybody in the lineup. Yandy Diaz batting 321. Isaac Paredes, Wander Franco, Josh Lowe, Randy Arozarena. Some names that aren't even household names in the baseball world are stepping up and the reason that the Tampa Bay Rays are as good as they are. They are getting offensive production from literally everybody they put in the lineup and they're doing all of this while competing in a stadium that is in st pete where they don't even get fans where year in and year out they are traditionally at the bottom of the league in attendance because they're playing at the trop which is not near as nice of a stadium as everybody else around the league and again worth repeating the tampa bay rays don't have a stadium in tampa Put them in Tampa. Allow the fans that love the team to show up and fill the stands. I absolutely believe they can and they will, but it's very difficult to get to St. Pete. So everything that they're doing, it's very hard to even be able to watch this team. But the world and their fans deserve to watch them. The Tampa Bay Rays' entire organization is a machine, and they're a finely tuned machine at that, and they deserve a lot of love. Thank you. You nailed that. Yeah. yeah. I think the world needed to hear that and understand that. Because <laughs> it's crazy when you put it into perspective, especially with the salaries and what they're able to do just with these these players that other teams have given up on or, or don't know yeah. how to focus on their strengths. And it's not just this year. They've no. been doing it for like a decade, it yeah. feels like. And I will it, it hasn't been enough to get them that World Series, you know, but it's it's yeah. enough to get them there. It almost feels like it's a version of Moneyball money at its height. Mm -hmm. I don't. The A's aren't doing Moneyball anymore. Don't yeah. let them chalk what they're doing up to Moneyball. It almost feels like the Rays are the new version, but the analytical version of yeah. it. Like it's very, very impressive to watch what the Rays are doing. And there's, it's, it really does deserve so much credit. It's remarkable. And to hear from those players, because every Ray that I, Ray Rays, Rays, every Rays, Rays player, player. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can get out of it. But yeah, yeah. every Rays player I've had on, I ask like. How do you do it? What is it? How is the organization <laughs> Give doing Give us it? the secret. And What's they the all juice? say, every one of them, the second you come over, they just put you in that position to succeed. And oh, there's clearly something impressive going on there. That's awesome. But I'm with you, too. I feel like they need a new stadium in Tampa Bay. Please. Please. Just make it happen. Just, just do it. They, they get far too much, like, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but they get like made fun of at times because of their attendance from people that don't quite understand. Oh, it's a trek. It's a nightmare. Yeah. And they have so many fans. I do believe if they were in Tampa, mm -hmm. sports fans in Tampa yeah. are awesome. They're great. They're great. And it's just this team doesn't even play in Tampa, and it's a nightmare to get to. So yeah. I feel like they get too much uh, – they don't get enough credit 
for the team they are, and then they get a lot of discredit, if if you will, yeah. for their attendance when that's really, really not fair. No. Yeah. <sighs> All right. It's game time. All right. You ready for this? Yeah. Name that team. We're still doing starting pitchers, okay. ace through five. I'm going to give you the high school, college, or country that they were drafted or signed out of. You have one minute to guess the team. All right. Are you ready? Yeah, it's for getting team harder and harder. Number one. Yep. Team number one. Out of UC Santa Barbara, Oklahoma State, Florida International, Stanford, and Cal State Fullerton. Name. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Did I say the wrong thing? Or when I was I right? No, I just I well I don't know that answer. Okay. But I knew you were reading. I looked up and was like, wait a That's second. That's weird. Yeah, because I, I put it down here. Is, are we right? Was I wrong? Okay. Karma for rooting against me. We'll pick it up with team number one. Yeah, which team? Was the one you were reading number one or the one Aaron put up number one? What? Which team is going to be? I'm not going to tell you. I'll have to find out in a second. Well, I didn't get enough. I don't even That's know. That's cool. Got it. Yep. I'm ready. Good. Team number one. UC Santa Barbara, Oklahoma State, Florida International, Stanford, and Cal State Fullerton. Name that team. <sighs> okay. UC Santa Barbara. Oklahoma State. UC Santa Barbara, ace of a staff. I think I got it. Okay. I think I got it. Kay. But it's not. UC Santa Barbara is a, is the giveaway. But Kay. I randomly know that Battenfield went to Oklahoma State with the Guardians. I believe Shane Bieber is the one. This is the Cleveland Guardians. Yes, it is. <laughs> 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 you crushed this game. Peyton Battenfield was my giveaway. Okay. Not really. Shane All Bieber, right. UC Santa Barbara, knew that one. Logan Allen, FIU, Cal Control, uh, Control Stanford. Yeah. Wow. This That's isn't good. an easy one, but I had a couple giveaways. All right, I feel yeah, good. You We're feel off good. and running. Okay. One for one. Are you ready for team number two? Yes. Japan, high school in California, high school out of Washington. Is it Sedentary College of Louisiana? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Texas A&M. Name that team. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with the San Diego Padres. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> It was a. Uh -huh. it, it got a little tricky. Why? Because well, I feel like if Japan, you're in. Japan no. ace. Yeah. But it, the rest of the rotation lines up with like high school, high school with the Angels as well. So you know, Japan ace uh, of a staff that really obviously okay. narrows it down. Yeah. But then high school out of Washington was my giveaway with okay. Blake Snell. All right. So there was that. That was my. That two was for my. two. All right, two Are for two. Are you ready for final? One final one. Our yes. final team. Ready? Okay. Yep. Team number. Three, Venezuela, Oregon State, University of Florida, Cal State Fullerton, high school out of Kansas, name that team. Oh. I thought you were going to get it right off no. the bat. Okay. Venezuela. I was feeling that. Oregon State, Florida, Cal State Fullerton, and then high school. Venezuela could be, who's on that WBC team? Pablo Lopez, but he's, it's not the twins. Martin Perez, but he's not the ace because of DeGrom, who's out right now. So he could bump up to the ace. Venezuela, Oregon State, Andrew Heaney. Flo I'm going to say the Texas Rangers is the answer. And no! Tigers. No. That's why I thought you were going to get it right off no. the bat. I'm like, it's your team. It's your guys. No. Heaney was Oklahoma State, not Oregon yeah. State. No. Yeah. That's so funny. I'm shocked. I thought this was going to be your easy one. Fido. I literally thought you were getting it right off the bat. Man. 
Man. Bummer, dude. Tough. Bummer, dude. <laughs> Dang it. Especially yeah, I when it's your team. Fido should have known. He was the our first pick when I was still in the organization. I I, I went wrong. It's okay. Oklahoma State and Oregon State. I know State you were was so confident. I like put my head down because I didn't want to give away my facial expressions. I was like, don't react, don't react, don't react, don't react. <laughs> okay. Well, still two okay. for three. Yeah. B plus. B plus. Yeah. That's fair. All right. Yeah. Always fun though. It's great. Always fun. You know what else is fun? What? Fan questions. Yes. And now yes, we got some are. fan Twitter questions. We're going to wrap up this week's show with our first one from Savannah. Okay. What is your go-to condiment on a hot dog at a ballpark? I'm – great question. Yeah. I'm a very – Simple man. Simple man Of course here. you are. Ketchup, mustard, that's it. Just the two. Okay. You're going to think I'm so weird. <laughs> Just, what do you go? Well, because I can't have the bun – so I get two dogs. So you don't have a hot dog. I do. I no, got you meat. Just have the I wiener. got meat on a stick, and then I put <laughs> just the meat on. That, does that even count as a hot dog then? It is because I'm still eating the 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 dog, just not the bun. And then I put ketchup and onions together, like in the the wrap that it comes in a Dodger dog, and I dip. <laughs> I have beef my with hot Dodger dogs. dogs. I think they stop selling them no they still call them dodger dogs but apparently they like screwed over the guy that originally did them and then they just kept the name i don't know the whole story so i don't want to get fully into it but apparently it was like this cool story and now they just like when they don't do that anymore but they kept the name dodger dog Uh, i don't know we'll need to talk to some of the we have a lot of dodgers people yeah i grew up at the stadium so you've had many dodger dogs anyway my question here (laughs) my answer is ketchup and mustard but my question becomes this is similar to like the question of is a hot dog a sandwich if there's no bun yeah is it really a hot dog yes i'm still eating the hot dog just a wiener it's a hot dog no all right the hot dogs with the with the with the Uh -uh. the bun the bun it is a hot dog and so I still if you're eating the dog a cheeseburger if you will if you take the bun bun. no then it's just a patty and it's delicious. Yeah, but and it's, it's delicious, it. but it's just a patty. You're not eating a cheeseburger. Yes, I am. Protein style, baby. This is an interesting question. It's different from the question of. So you go to In and Out, you a get a burger a sandwich. protein style. It's still a cheeseburger protein style. It's just wrapped in lettuce opposed to a bun. You, you think I go to In and Out and get something protein style? I'm just telling you from a gluten freak over here. Yeah. This is what I've had to do for 16 years. This, okay. This presents a great question, I will add. It's similar to along the lines of is a hot dog a sandwich, but it's not the question. It's without the <laughs> bun, is a hot dog still yes! a hot dog? And without the bun, yes! is a burger? still a cheeseburger yes, or a hamburger yes, i would say is. no you gotta yes, have is. the bun great no. question savannah it sparked a lot of uh sparked a lot of good, <laughs> good a lot stuff. of heat yeah. okay let's move on to our next fan question okay. from seth green do you think we see michael brantley play this year i am worried i am so the situation with michael brantley he was had his shoulder issue that's why he hadn't played and for for a long time and then goes on his rehab assignment and then they put a stop to that mm-hmm. because of shoulder inflammation his surgically repaired shoulder and there's no timetable for return um so dusty baker called it a minor setback but mm-hmm. all of the signs point to it not being minor so look seth i'm no doctor I don't see the x-rays or the MRIs. I'm not going to sit here and say, do we see Michael Brantley this year? But I will say from everything that I know that he got shut down because there's inflammation in the surgically repaired shoulder, uh, no timetable for return. I am worried. My answer is I hope we do see him, but I am not, I I, I don't know, but that does suck. It, It It sucks for everybody involved. All right. Our next question comes from Ben. And his question is, do you guys think the Red Sox will continue to be hot or will they fall apart mid-season again? This is tricky because I don't I don't believe this is a playoff base. That's I was going to say. You said they weren't going to make the postseason. Correct. So I don't want to sit here and like assume a team is going to fall apart because that feels like the opposite of what I normally do. Right. I talk about the good things happening and the Red Sox are certainly one of those right now. But for the reason that I didn't believe they would make the playoffs this season is because I don't know if the pitching can hold up over the course of an entire season. 
Now, I, I will say there have been some massive bright spots that I don't know if I was expecting to see. Chris Sale coming off of some very good starts. James Paxton came back and was throwing 97 miles an hour. Um, so he's looked good. I'm, I just have concerns with the pitching, and to me, that's what says – that's what says this team is due for a bit of a regression or a bit of a tough spell at some point throughout the season, just because the best teams you see having good rotations that you can count on. And as of right now, what we're getting with the Red Sox is very good offense, elite offense paired with pitching that has been more than adequate and playing above what anybody expected them to. Can they do that over the course of an entire season? I don't know, but I, I would say no. So for that reason, I think we're due for a bit of a regression for the Red Sox, or even maybe not regression. It's just they're playing, I think, above what anybody thought they would to this point in the year, and they're still in last place or second to last mm -hmm. place because of how good the AL East really is. So you're going to have to be an elite team all year long to make the playoffs out of the AL East, and I just don't know if the Red Sox are going to be able to do that because of their pitching. Yeah, they're currently in second to last place right now. Yeah. Yeah, flip-flopping with the Yankees. Yep. Yeah. Okay, one final question from Kay. Big Single Guy, Ben. Big Single Guy. If okay. you were single, what would be your go-to pickup line? <laughs> we got another dating question. I'm I loving love it. Okay, let's go. Uh, if you were single, what would be... Your pickup I'm so line? ready to judge you your for this. Your go-to pickup line? I'm so ready to judge you. Let me just preface this with saying I'm a big dad joke guy, and I that probably doesn't do me <laughs> any favors in that, in that world. Let's so I would it. obviously have to come out with some sort of dad joke. Okay. Hit us. <sighs> hmm. Maybe I did. Not one that was ever used, but uh -huh. I do feel like there's a good one. <laughs> Go. Come on. Do you know CPR? No. Because you're taking my breath away. And I need it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so cheesy. Pretty good. Pretty that, good. How about a date? I would say not bad. <laughs> not bad. I'm 17 years out of the dating game. Missed yeah. the whole apps thing, like all that jazz. But I did hear oh boy. an interview yes. with Lil Dicky recently, <laughs> and nice. I loved his pickup line. He used the same one until he found his. Now I, I don't know if they're engaged or they're gonna get engaged, whatnot. Do we know you know it? Yeah. Are you gonna say it? Yeah. Yes. Great. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What's your comfort level of being hit on right now? Does he wait for an answer? Yeah, and if they say hi, it's like great. What if they say? And then love? you go. All right, then I'm out. It's kind. Interesting. What's your comfort level of being hit on right now? Give like put it put it in the person you're hitting on court, whether yeah. you're a guy or girl or whatever you're like whoever you're hitting on, put it in their court. That's a great What's point. What's your comfort For level of being mega, hit on right now? Mega superstar yeah. like Lil Dicky. All you have yeah. to do is be a superstar that people know and then hey, you can ask generic just questions be kind. like that. Be kind. It doesn't look it does not work for everybody. There's plenty of people that are kind know. and just get blown off. <laughs> Lil Dicky's Lil Dicky. Of course he can go up and be like, hey, what's your level to get hit on? And they'd be like, hi. And he'd be like, Yeah. Sup? Let's go. <laughs> it's very easy for him. <laughs> um, all right. Is that our last That's our last question? one. That was a fun one. That's that it. That was a good one. Uh, and that's it for the Tuesday episode. The first Tuesday episode. Stay tuned. Uh, there is a part two today. Bonus edition this week in Shohei Otani news that drops in the afternoon. So make sure you check that out as well. But for this first Tuesday episode, thank you all for listening. Really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe anywhere you listen to your podcast. Apple, Spotify, wherever. We're also on all social media. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and you can watch every single episode as well on YouTube at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of them. Thanks for listening to this first Tuesday episode. Until next time, 